What made her this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. On June 17, 2016, Christine uploaded a YouTube video in which she reads the first chapter of a work of online fanfiction called Unicorns, Rainbows, and a Bluebird of Happiness, written by Kiwi Farms member Reverend Lovejoy, who frequently communicated with her, posing as an online friend. It was later revealed that William Elliot Waterman had regained Chris's trust and had convinced her to start making the videos because he told her that she would likely receive monetary donations from people in return. I want to thank, firstly thank everybody for their donations. We received a generous amount. Of the, my mom chose the term red flag. <laughs> Not distress, but anyway, uh, she got her medication for her asthma, so that's good, very good. And uh, I had, and with a little bit of that, I had to pull her her bank account out of the reg because a couple of automatic drafts. <sighs> but anyway, we're still gonna need we still need money to help us be able to eat better for the rest of the month. But also our electric bill came and it's due immediately, rounding up to about two hundred dollars. But anyway in the meantime we're beginning a I'm beginning a new a new series of a recommended story called Unicorns, rainbows, and a bluebird of happiness. I have not read this thing, though I started to recently at uh, me, but I checked with my uh, friend who assures me that it all ends be it all ends a lot better than the way it sounds at first. So anyway, it'll be like a chapter per day, uh, every other day or so. But anyway, we're doing this. I'm gonna start reading chapter one. Chapter 1, Laundry Day. Huh, let's see, do I have everything? Do I have everything? An average sized man with pink hair said with a smile as he stood in the center of his bedroom wearing a light blue tuxedo, as well as a pair of pink and blue checkered pants. She would continue to read through the book over the next two weeks, recording only the first four chapters out of the 14 chapter long story. On June 19th, Chris wished a happy Father's Day to all to be still alive and departed fathers, honoring her own father, Bob Chandler, by posting a previously unreleased photograph of him. Three days later, Marvin, former major troll, QB Farms moderator and administrator of the Quickie, leaked a recent video of Christine in which she advertises her services as a prostitute. The reasons for production and means of acquisition of the video are not certain. Hello ladies, how'd you like to spend a little quality time with this sexy bard, huh? These sexy breasts. Mm. And the thing that I was wrongfully born with down there. Oh, good quality time. We can have it one way, or we can play it the lesbian way. So, for fifty dollars, we could do a cuddle. For a hundred dollars, we could do pretty much, ain't pretty much near anything. I don't do anal though. I don't do anal, but we we'll do anything else. We can even romp with toys, and I have lots of hidden potential. So send an email. Give me a response. Tell me one little lovely, sexy evening with Miss Stephanie Buscakes. Advice to the email only. Nobody with STDs and only women of any orientation be apply. No, well, straight lesbian and bi. Oh, y'all got, uh, got the pussy? 
Oh, I'm very happy to work with a little bit of that. I meant to show up a booty. Did booty look good enough for you? So, it's fine now. On June 26th, Christine posted a short random thought on Facebook, simply writing, Hosiery and stockings are one of society's non-conforming garments. The next day, Chris wrote a rare tweet on the social media site Twitter, directed at her half-brother, Cole Smithy, angry at him since he apparently lived in New York's bleeding Carnegie Hall, with rent set at $2,000 per month, and so could also afford to support their mother, Barbara. Later that day, Chris wrote a heated Facebook post elaborating on the same topic. This just in! Hashtag Joseph Cole Smithy, residing in Carnegie Hall with wife as early as 2000. More than $2,000 a month's rent. Pissing and burning away money. Should really be sharing it with his caring biological mother and sister. Mother paid his way through schools. Paid for his car. Reared him with lots of love and care. Mother and daughter really could use financial help. Cole hates his own mother over father issues and false rumors spread by aunts and uncles. Never contacts neither his mother or sister. Sister, Christine Weston Chandler, quoted, We hardly ever hear from the b****rd. Hashtag JCS is quoted to be world's smartest a-hole. Update. I just relearned and confirmed with a past signature care package sent to Cole last Christmas that he currently lives a few buildings down East 90th from Carnegie Hall. But he did live at Carnegie Hall as early as 2000, as confirmed by a Christmas card mailed to our mother, December of 2000. This was a couple of years before the b**rd disowned her. The block must still have very pricey rent anyhow. Money burner. The post also included a new drawing in which Cole sits in his Carnegie Hall residence, literally burning a box of money originally designated for his mother and sister by throwing it into the fireplace. At the same time, his TV shows a report of the Chandler's house fire while he is thinking that the theatrical play version of A Christmas Carol at Carnegie Hall is garbage due to its good ending. Christine Strossum gal pal, Kim Wilson, left a comment on her post, writing that Cole had a different experience with his mother than Chris did and his feelings about her should be treated as valid. On June 29th, she made two videos for YouTube in the first of which, she asks for more donations and apologizes to the male gender. But first, I have, uh, do have a couple of announcements to make. We received a good number of donations, but we could still do better. And, uh, yeah, it's fair. We've, we've managed for the most part. Um, uh, anyway... I also have an I have a most sincere and direct apology to all the males worldwide around the world, of which the details come to my attention that we have more than in common. And I'm gonna, I wrote it down, so go read my apology. Gentlemen of the world, I have learned and realized that y'all, as a male, are okay. All people, female and male, are more alike than we realize. We are all the same inside the womb. Half of us come out changed from that, and half of us gets to remain unchanged. And really the difference between genders, genders is the one mutation created by the chromosome, and the varying levels of mentality and ability individually. And for putting y'all down as a group, I deeply apologize. Deeply and sincerely. I respect you each as people and individuals, but I still maintain the respectable arm's length distance when being approached in person. In the next video, Chris states that she has allegedly cured herself of autism through the use of binaural beats. I have I've actually been on a subliminal project, as a lot of you, or some of you, may have been 
aware of through my history or whatever that I try to keep private amongst my YouTube settings. But I have been enjoying for the past three months the Get Rid of Autism Subliminal. The one that actually works in three months. You listen three, you listen three times per day. Three to six times. I have been doing that and I've actually found myself more mentally capable. I don't I do not blank out as much. I feel a little bit faster in mental processing. And I feel a whole lot better. So with that, I'm essentially cured of autism. Oh and also I've actually have been able to socialize better out in public. So that's another good deal right there. I'm gonna put the link underneath this video. And those of y'all with autism, try it for yourself. Three, play three times per day for three months. It worked for me. On July 3rd, Christine wrote a post on the news aggregate and discussion site Reddit, specifically in the subreddit dedicated to discussing the series of YouTube channels run by an organization of creators known collectively as Planet Dolan. In her post, she revealed her opinions regarding a revelation learned from a recent Planet Dolan video. Hey, boys, get ready to have your minds blown. As Planet Dolan has said, Everyone is female inside the womb until if and when the Y chromosome mutates the girl to be a boy. Which, when you really think about it, with everyone being female initially, even pre-birth, being manly or manliness is very much made up. Anyhow, and you can try this at home in private. Push, maybe tough, into the center of the skin patch between your legs. The taint. You may find one or two grooves hidden under there. One of them, yes, is your unbirthable vagina since the uterus would be shrunk during the Y mutation. Punchline, if every gay male knew about this, all they'd have to do is cut their taint, and they'd have a new hole to play with. Seriously though, maybe professional sugary would be best for that business opening. Or, for the price of Wi-Fi and your YouTube viewing device, you could try opening it in as soon as six months, less if listened to more often with a subliminal track. On July 9th, Chris made a lengthy video on YouTube featuring several announcements. Hello everybody, this is a tired Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again with announcements. I have been made aware that the recent video logs for reading Rainbows, Unicorns, and the Bluebird Happiness, happiness are not very popular. Well, you can definitely blame that on Mr. Bill. Because he was the one that suggested I do it. <sighs> anyway, and then I real, and then I have been made aware that y'all would like maybe something original, and in the lines of like a day in my life. But guess what? I tell you what, my days have been short lately, and I know that every in my subconscious there's a new thing that's got press that's got press on my anxiety and stress levels that just totally drain me all over again where I'm not gonna feel like doing anything. <sighs> just drives me bonkers. <sighs> and then the finances. There's this always with the finances here, the mortgage, the bills, everything. I know you don't want to hear this shit because y'all have this y'all have these problems yourselves in your own way, but you know what? And over I'm in over my head. Anyway, I just, I don't hear anything from Sega officially, and I really would prefer, actually, to get the, get in the mailbox physically at home. I don't check my emails that often, even though my, even though my friend, even though my lay friends do, and sometimes they have to thin out the trolls and whatnot. Uh, but I'll tell you what, official Sega representative, fly on over, proof him or herself to me, and then we can actually get talking right here in Ruckersville. But no, and Sachu is actually, I believe, to be actually could be the next big thing for Sega. 
Sonic actually helped pull Sonic out of the ground. With all the darn fan fiction directions, should have kept it original, Sega. Stick to the original plots and whatnot. Not change a darn thing, including the arm color change, which I'm glad that that got finally resolved with the new Mario and Sonic Olympic game. And then on. <sighs> ah, finances. Mortgage payments. Ah, we really could use some more money around here, because as quickly as it comes in, it goes out. Because we gotta pay bills and we gotta get food around here. We gotta keep ourselves fed and everything. So please help us. I really do want to deliver new Sanchi and Roshi content, but I, it's hard for me to get back to the pages and drawing with all this stress in my life. And I really would like to be able. I have. I should have made little to no progress on the orders from Etsy store. I mean. I am that is, I am working on I'm working on getting myself motivated to do all that. And if I had the money, I'd re, I'd reimburse everybody. But I don't have a thousand dollars or so. It's all okay, it's all gotta go out to the food, the bills, everything, and it's driving me crazy. <sighs> help, please help. Help keep me and my mother fed. 74 years old she is. Two dogs, two cats, got a family of kittens in the backyard. And I'm still looking for a sweet for my sweetheart. You think I'm famous enough to actually able to get women? I have not been so fortunate. And yes, I've only had sex two times ever in my lifetime so I'm not a virgin and they're both in the same month and that was more than that was more than four years ago <sighs> <sighs> you think your life sucks because you're dwelling in your mother's basement you darn dirty internet trolls and cyber bullies think of how it is in my head I wish Cole Smithy would help us, but he's in New York being greedy, throwing his money away into the fire when he could be sharing it with his own mother to help pay him back, to help pay her back for the, putting him to the schools, the college, and the brand new car that was new in about 1980 or so. <sighs> and Alan Carroll could help me out because I'm still their half sibling. And with, the, with our late father being in the memory. In, he comes visit me in my dreams nearly every night. Day? I don't know, I'm on a night schedule right now and I'm trying to get back on a day schedule. It's difficult, my subconscious doesn't want to get me out of bed because I know something is going to bring me crazy that day. Every day, something crazy. <sighs> I get drained. <sighs> oh well. <sighs> That's it. Have a good day. On July 10th, Chris asked her Facebook readers for $20 or $50 via PayPal. This was soon followed by the first in a series of four short videos in which she asks for money. $20, $50 American, anybody, please donate. We need the money right now. In the second video, she provided some comic relief in exchange for donations. I don't know, hey, maybe a little comedy will help. Inspire you to donate. Pick and bounce. I'm a little picky, here's my snap. Oink, 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 oink. I'm a little picky, here's the meme. Oink, 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 here's my snout. The third video seemed to be a result of a request from a possibly willing donator, either the YouTuber Mysterious Mr. Enter or someone pretending to be him. By request of the mysterious Mr. Enter. Flub, 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 flub. Chris proceeds to say the word flub a total of 86 times. In the final video, she thanks her donator for their contribution. My mother and I, we have received the minimum $20 that we required in the meantime for our immediate emergency. 
But there is a bigger emergency. My mother still has her teeth problem. So further donations are greatly appreciated to help pay for that. Okay. But anyway, thank you to everyone who individually toured up the minimum $20 we need right now. Have a good, safe day. On July 12th, Christine revealed on Facebook that she had been watching the animated series Sonic Boom and complained about the portrayal of the character Knuckles, writing that his grammar and common sense used to be more normal. She attributed his decrease in intellect to a possible takeover of his brain by the Y chromosomes. The next day, Chris wrote that she was feeling stressed, dizzy, and mentally lost. She soon after wrote that she had taken an online personality test and found that she was kind, but thought that either bad people had taken male advantage of her kindness or not enough people around her noticed her positive qualities. On that same day, Chris uploaded a YouTube video centered on her mother, Barbara. My name is Barbara Chandler. I presently am in need of, a, of financial help to get dental work done. That's expensive. I'm asking for donations towards my dental repairs. Any amount will be helpful. The expense is large. Thank you for your Consideration. On July 14th, Chris advertised on Facebook that she was selling a Pokemon card, which she won as part of a sweepstakes sponsored by game publisher Wizards of the Coast in the year 2000 or 2001 on eBay, setting the starting bid at $50. Bidding on the card soon exceeded $300, due to Wien's leaving trollsome bids. Christine soon after listed more Pokemon cards up for sale, set at $100 each, and only available as Buy It Now items, possibly to deter Wien's from bidding falsified amounts, since by this time, her first Pokemon card listed up for sale had currently reached a bid of over $9,000. Also on that date, she revealed that she had downloaded the new mobile game, Pokemon Go, but was wary of playing it due to the cons mentioned in a video by YouTuber Jaywitz. Chris added that she might not ever play the game because of stresses and anxieties in her life. The next day, Christine posted a photo of a bag branded with My Little Pony character Sweetie Belle, looking downtrodden and expressing the sentiment of meh. Chris added context to her post. That's how I'm feeling right now. Please, at least help me with buying one or both of my Pokemon cards, right now! P.S. I am NOT on any drugs, nor have I ever smoked. You accusing, prevaricating, internet trolls and cyber bullies. And, I supposed my mother and I and our two dogs can starve, since nobody wants to donate to actually help us here at home anymore. Ugh! In the replies, Kim Wilson stated that Chris was indeed not smoking drugs, but was on Lipitor, her medication, and had allegedly tried marijuana. Jessica Quinn encouraged Chris to build up confidence in order for things to get better. Kim later added that Chris should refrain from using complicated words, like prevaricate, which may make her appear to be dumb as she tries to make it seem like she was more educated than she actually was. On July 18th, Kiwi Farms user Kuzbane using the alias George, texted Chris, asking if she would record a video for his girlfriend Amber to celebrate their anniversary. After receiving the details concerning the message of the video, Chris asked to be paid $50. She ended up recording and then uploading the video on YouTube before getting paid. Kuzbane later revealed that he refused to give any money to Chris. This was also notably the first video in six years to feature a Captain's Log introduction. Captain's Log, star date, July 18th, 2014. Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again. Uh, to start us off on this thing, I have a special dedication 
from uh, George to his girlfriend Amber. Personalized anniversary video. Hmm. Well, George, you're lucky to have Amber, I tell you what. Anyway, so, anyway, to Amber, happy anniversary. I love you so much. This has been the best six months of my life, and all in all to you. You made my life so wonderful. I hope this is only the beginning to the rest of our lives. From George to Amber. Happy anniversary, y'all. If you want, uh... I know, my brain's gone, trying to... Uh, stress, stress, anxiety, yep. Um, well, anyway, so... Alright, so reminder that I'll do personal videos for, uh, $50 a pop. Just like I did for George and Amber there. But since my shop is down, I'll take it, the requests, via text message to my phone number, which will be located right underneath this video. So, we'll, we'll do the arrangements there, and I'll do the video recording, and so on and so forth. Anyhow. Mm. Long day, long day. Uh, no comment on my personal life. Uh, no confirm or deny to rumors or facts, whichever. Um, <sighs> anyway, that's it for now. Thank you, and <sighs> have a good day. Have a good day. As a result of Chris publicly releasing her phone number to discuss making commissioned videos, she received a large amount of text messages from people wanting her to make videos reciting texts that were for the most part discreetly mocking of her character. Homosexual known as Josh has paid me $50 in the United States currency to paint this video. He is truly a crazy fucking idiot for doing so. His words, not mine. He wanted me to tell his friend, Nicole, that she is an attractive slut and that he, admire her, he admires her greatly and appreciates her filthy whore face. Happy early birthday, you magnificent piece of human garbage. You are such trash and we all love you a lot. On a more serious note, Josh also wanted me to remind you that Hmm, I, Christine, am now and I've always been a worthwhile human being that deserves a great amount of respect and gratitude for over the years of creativity and effort I have poured forth. Please take a moment out of each day to think about the tremendous good I have done for you and others and what you could do to give back. Be the hero that you feel inside. Be the science you that's in your heart. And go fast. Go to PayPal and buy a personalized video just like Josh did. With much love, Josh asked me to bid you a fond farewell and may lightning hedgehogs guide you to a path of happiness. Well, Nicole, at least uh, he appreciates you. Over the course of the next nine days, she released nine videos, which were made as part of her commissioned video plan she devised in the absence of her Etsy store. These included her singing the Beatles song, Yellow Submarine. Yellow Submarine, and we all live in a... We all live in a hippopotamus, a hippopotamus, a hippopotamus. We all live in a hippopotamus, a hippopotamus. Sitting on my head. And a video in which she sings a supposed song called Fuck Fuck Shake My Boobies. Fuck 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 it was soon removed, and her YouTube channel received a strike, leaving it one more strike away from being removed and terminated entirely, about which she complained in the Facebook post.
This also prevented her from uploading any new videos for two weeks. It was around this time that Christine became depressed because allegedly some unknown lesbians told her that she was not a real female because she did not have a vagina. Believing that the subliminal frequency videos she had been watching on YouTube were having a positive effect on her, Chris thought that her inner labia was beginning to grow underneath her taint, or the space between her testicles and her anus. After drinking some alcohol, she took a knife and cut open a gash in her taint, thinking it would release her labia trapped underneath. She then took photos of it and published them on the image hosting site, Imager. On July 24th, Christine made a Facebook post concerning her labia, but implied that it had naturally burst out and opened. Announcement! As a number of online people may be aware, I have been grooving with the subliminal frequencies and binaural beats towards my transition from male to female body. The source being the subliminal frequency hypnosis wizard's binaural beats channel on YouTube. Last March, I've started simple with growing my breasts out with their breast growth hormone track. It worked to my amazement at a full inch outward per week in about two months. I've also listened to change my nipples to teats, as well as begin producing breast milk. Also, related, from a separate track on another channel, I have eased and cured the worst of my autism too. But since last May, I decided to take it a step further and begin my transition from male to female with the penis to vagina tracks including the individual organ changing tracks and for a while the intersex track. And two Fridays ago, July 15th, while I slept that night, my labia started splitting open and I found the initial hole and in blood the next morning and over the few days that followed, the labia opened to its full length and I've been dealing with the blood that came out. I have been keeping it clean, daily monitoring it and treating it with rubbing alcohol. I have started the wheels in motion for the full HRT and SRS by seeing my doctor last Friday because I felt like I didn't want to wait much longer to fully become the woman that I should have been born as. With that, I have uploaded a photo of my labia onto Imager for all 18 plus year old individuals to see. But I do not want to be overrun with tabloid and paparazzi attention over this or have a total big deal made. As for my own statement to quote, I will state the following. Have belief and faith in what your body can do. And with such binaural beats and frequencies, as well as persistence and patience, what you'd like can happen for you. Her Facebook friends and onlookers from Kiwi Farms showed great concern over her situation. Null, the administrator of the farms, informed a medical professional about Chris's condition, and they felt that if the hole was the result of her past infected taint piercing, there was a great chance that she could die because of it. Kiwi Farms user Doc Cassidy wrote several text messages to Chris, begging her to go to the hospital, to which she replied that she had gone to the hospital the previous night and found that there was no infection. She soon after wrote a brief post to publicly announce her alleged medical examination of the previous night. Jessica Quinn commented that Chris should seek a second opinion and then provide proof that she had gone to the doctor. Christine later edited her post to state that she had gone to the doctor on that same day rather than the previous night. After receiving numerous messages of concern for her health, Christine soon followed up with a short post which stated that the photos were allegedly faked to troll the trolls. On that same day, she made another Facebook post showing that she had gotten a woman card in support of politician Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign and also that she had gotten a new driver's license which stated that her given name was Christine and that she was female. Two days later, Kiwi Farms user Innocuous Banter sent some text messages to Chris, attempting to learn more about her current health situation. Chris informed them that she had gone to the doctor and apparently was told that her labia was coming in good and that it would finish growing in a few months. Marvin of the Kiwi Farms and other former trolls close to her tried their hardest to convince Christine to go to the emergency room and provide proof of it. She later sent them the prescription she received as proof but upon checking it, they determined that she had lied about her condition as her medication seemed to be for testicular pain rather than her self-inflicted taint wound. After aggressive persistence, Chris sought proper attention to get her wound treated, after which time she deleted her Facebook posts regarding her labia and tried to avoid the topic online. According to Marvin, Christine had believed that her labia was going to sprout out at some time, but by cutting her taint open, she thought she could accelerate the process. 
On July 28th, she made a new paid video for YouTube. To evade the two-week-long ban, she created a new YouTube channel, Christine Chandler, in order to upload it. Sexual intimacy will no longer be intimate. The act will be as mundane conversation. We will be monitored by artificial intelligence through every medium for our own protection. And humans will always feel inclined to erode morality through slogans relating to love and freedom, believing that it is part of evolution, conditioned from birth to worship the institution. Two days later, she uploaded another video to her second YouTube channel, a reading of the 2008 novelette written by the troll Vivian G, which up to this point was left unread. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, we have been busy around here. We've been clearing out lots and lots of boxes. So I should go ahead through them since we moved back here. Anyway, among which I found a book that I have been curious about for a little for a little while, for a while. Because I never actually got, I actually never read it. A girl who brought down the world, who survived a house fire. Boo! You know, the one that the author had actually sent me, the proof copy. Uh, so anyway, I have been curious, so I'm going to start reading it now. In, a video, in another video series. And this is of my own personal merit. Nobody has paid me or asked me to do this. Okay, chapter one, Neighbors. Uh, hello, my name is Kid. I'm just a cute girl. At least, that's what everyone tells me. I don't have many friends in the city I live in. She would eventually make two more videos reading through the book, covering the first four chapters. In early August, Barbara Chandler was sued by Capital One Bank for unpaid debts. The hearing was set to take place on September 14th of that year. Christine was also ordered to pay fines amounting to $111 for failing to acquire licenses for the family's dogs. Also during this time, Chris was keeping busy with clearing out old boxes from the family's house, which had been lying stagnant ever since they moved back in a year and a half ago. This made her unavailable to respond to mounting text messages or fulfill video orders, but promised that she would return to making videos shortly. On August 6th, Chris shared an article on Facebook which wrote that PayPal had decided to close the accounts for the Quickie and the Kiwi Farms due to the harm the sites caused unto others. Chris called herself the top victim of the criminals and asked if PayPal would provide her with compensation in return. On August 8th, she regained the ability to upload videos on her original channel after a two-week-long ban and continued her paid video campaign. Ah, hello, this is Christine Chandler coming to you from my home once again. Uh, so, hey, uh, Shelly from your husband. He definitely wishes you a happy birthday and I'll wish you a happy birthday too. Okay, so... You turn another year older, another year wiser. It's good. Have a good day. On August 9th, after the person who bid over $9,000 on her Pokemon card failed to pay for it, Christine relisted the card again on eBay, set at a buy it now price of $500. She also listed a VHS release of the Disney film Aladdin, set at a buy it now price of $3,000. Upon believing the claims at the time that the Disney films released as part of the Black Diamond collection were worth thousands of dollars. The next day, she shared an article which reported that a mother and son that were involved in an incestuous relationship were arrested. Chris also let her own feelings on the subject be known. I have a few things to say in response to this article. Firstly, the child was over 18 and surely the mother has talked it out with him beforehand. The child might have had social problems, or a situation where socializing or going out to socialize with other people was a greater difficulty. Financial situation to prevent paying someone else to come over and help out in the situation. Moreover, it was the lifelong affections between parent and child. Also, the mother probably could not bear any ovum for children anymore. Anyhow, who among everyone in this world has not had a dream of having sex with one of their parents? Never acting on them ever, I, myself, did have dreams of having sex with my mother. Although incest is quite a controversial topic, 
but there are circumstances where there would be not so much harm as one may think, feel or believe. The child is over 18. The mother is unable to have any more children at the time. Birth control and protection is available and can be used. In the case of father slash daughter, birth control definitely should be used anyhow. Also, consider if the child is adopted, not as much biological. Plus, this offers a chance for better teaching the child how to better satisfy their eventual partners. The schools can only teach from books, not so much practice. And nobody wants to end up being a 20 or 30 plus year old virgin. I know, that is a huge enduring pain. Unless the sex act was abusive, hurtful, or would result in an unwanted birth of a physical or mental challenged child. I would not judge or persecute the parent and child. I would encourage the child to socialize more, maybe make it easier for the child to meet more people his slash her age. Do not send the mother and son to jail. Kim Wilson commented that incest was not harmless like Chris stated, but in fact could cause serious mental issues and emotional scarring and advised her against taking part in incest. Christine clarified that she had not and would not. As Christine caused herself a medical emergency, she refused to admit that she was bringing herself in harm's way, overcome with the belief that she could transform her body into a true female form. With the overflow of messages of concern and advice, it appeared that rather than observing her every move out of mockery or amusement, there was an increasing number of people watching to make sure she was safe. For Chris continued to prove, day after day, that she could not live her life comfortably on her own.